Let's pray. God, our, God, our Father, Lord. thank you, Lord, so much. Lord, we want to honor you tonight with this time. Father, we know that you have some great and mighty things for us and a huge assignment for us. Father, we love you and we lift your name up on high. We worship you, our King. Please forgive us of all of our past yucks. Forgive us of all of what we think are insecurities. Forgive us of us not seeing ourselves as the people that you called us to be. Lord, we know we are more and we are greater because of what you've done for us in our lives. We trust you and we praise you. Let this time be all about you. Help us get our focus on you and not any distractions. Love you, Lord. In Jesus' name, let your name be glorified. In the name of Jesus, amen. Yeah, do you got something? Okay. But it's not anything of what I say, it's just this thing. Extremely awesome. I guess you'll find out. I guess we'll all find out. Yeah? Go. And it shall come to pass in the last days, says God. That I will pour out of my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. Your old men shall see dreams. And on my manservants and on my maidservants, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they shall prophesy. Amen. Thank you for reading the word. You're welcome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Before Thank you, Lord, before we even it. get started, he wants me to tell you a story. <clears throat> I am doing the best I can. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> um, this became a reality to me yesterday. And I knew it before, but I didn't do that until yesterday. When he gave me the revelation to see what took place. In my life. No condemnation. You didn't know. But my mom was going to name me Teresa and call me Harry. Dad says, if you're going to call her Harry, name her Harry, right? So every time they introduced me or, or I introduced me, I say, my name is Harry. And they're like, oh, is that short for Teresa or something? And they're like, no. It's just here, just here. So my whole entire life, I felt like just here. I didn't feel like I was big enough to do anything. I didn't feel like I was capable of doing anything bigger than what I was just <laughs> And not knowing, that was spoken over my whole life. Oh, it's just Terry. So I've always just felt average. I always just felt like I wasn't good enough. I always felt like I couldn't accomplish anything bigger than what I saw myself as. I'm just here. Yeah. The revelation hit me yesterday that I'm not just Robin. I'm not just Marie. I'm not just Grandpa. I'm not just Nancy or, or, or. 
we were called. This team was called for the next key step to ignite the ecclesia. Do you understand the magnitude of this assignment? Could just any average, just barely good enough person accomplish this task without already being predestined for greatness? Why do you think I was called just Do you know what Terry is short for? Territory. I was destined to take over territory. I was destined to take over cities and lands. And the enemy knew it. So he made me believe that I was just, I was just, I was just. No. He made me believe that it wasn't anything bigger than just. Does that make sense to you now? Of who you are? You were destined for greatness. We were destined for greatness. And we have to see ourselves bigger than what we were told all growing up. How many of you were told or led to believe or made to be felt like you couldn't accomplish anything bigger than just, you know? So the revelation came to me yesterday when somebody asked me my name. I said, well, I'm Terry. They're like, oh, is that short for Teresa? I said, no, I'm just, <coughs> It hit me because I see, and we're going to talk about what our assignment is about, but we have to see ourselves the way God originally created us. When we are see ourselves as just Robin, as just Andrew, as just, we can't see the bigger picture. And if we can't see the bigger picture, we're not going to be able to take that path because we see ourselves small. And so we only want to see ourselves unworthy, not good for nothing. But he said, I destined you for greatness. So if any of you ever felt like that, which I know this, everybody has, <laughs> it's because we are called to a higher purpose and a higher calling. Does that make sense to you? So everyone here and that watches this and that has been following us as far as him through this group, we were destined for greatness. And the enemy hid that from us our whole life. And it led us down paths of unworthiness. And it led us down paths of we're not good enough. And what makes you think you could have a big house and a big car and a big ministry and a big... What makes you think you could take over nations and go on stage and bring joy to millions of people like with your, your dance and your laughter and your, your sense of humor? What makes you think you can do that? The enemy stole that from all of us because he knew if we found out, then we're going to shed that little vision of ourselves and we're going to step into the greatness that God called us to step into. Right? For all of us. So no condemnation. You didn't know. We didn't know about words and we didn't know that that made a who knew, who knew that that was going to make a difference in my life? Unknowingly, it did. I always felt like secondhand rose. I always felt like I was just there. I was always just there. I just, you know? 
because that's what the enemy wanted me to do. And I didn't know any better. But now I do know better. And I see myself not like just Gary. I see myself as a leader of the army of Christ. Who's the army? Who's the army? You're missing one. There you <laughs> go. <laughs> Who's that army? You. Now, you're standing up here with the leader of the army, and we're not any different, are we? I felt the same way you were. I went through what you did. I was like, what? You mean I am too much? You mean I do have something to contribute to society as a whole, to God's kingdom? I mean, what? I'm not this little in, insecure, just person, but I'm actually mighty in the kingdom of God. Pretty cool. There's so many hand pictures. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Again. I'm still trying to wrap my hand head around that. <laughs> Say it again. Hand picked by the king of the universe. For that's your time and sis. For this assignment that we are going to do, that all the prophets of the nations are watching and seeing and know that something's coming, something big, this shift, this catalytic explosion is coming and they're all seeing it and they're all they're all talking about it and they're all prophesying about it but guess who are the ones who are going to do it <laughs> we are we are uh, i didn't hear you we are huh i am what we are huh i am i am we what? are That's we're right. gonna do it we're gonna do it we're gonna do it and how are we gonna do it yeah, that's going to help us get there. But what are we going to do? We are going to that Bible mm -hmm. and our faith is going to ignite the anointing up there at that gate, and it's going to cause an explosion that's going to affect the ecclesia and activate them for greater signs, wonders, and miracles such the world has never seen. How do you see yourself there? He wants you to understand you are more than what the enemy is trying to steal from us. He wants all of us to understand we are more than what the enemy is trying to steal from us and make us think that we are. Why do you think he's fighting so hard to make us think that? Why do you think he's fighting so hard? To make us feel insecure and not good enough, and I, I'll just be meek and mild and a servant and quiet and be pleasing to men and fix everybody's situation so their atmosphere is good. So, if their atmosphere is good, mine's good. You are called for greater. You were not created to be a Martha, you were created to be a man. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Do you understand the difference? Mm -hmm. Martha is the servanthood. And get mad that Mary's not helping, but Mary, I, I those dishes can wait. I want Jesus, right? So Mary's go after him, and that's what we do. Make the difference of how you see yourself, right? That's just all him. And you see, I don't have anything here, that's all him. With that, we have some stuff we're going to talk about. I want to remind you guys of such the world has never seen. Greater signs, wonders, miracles, never. You guys remember what those words mean. Let me help you understand that you're, you are here to hold me up. So forget, I don't mean to be rude, but this is not about you. <laughs> it, you are holding me up right now if it wasn't for you and your faith stabilizing me i'd be able to stand because i can barely stand it like rubber you know like yeah mm -hmm. right look how important you are be 
Because if I was on the floor, how come it's just going So you are important because you're holding it up. Do you just stay right here, please? Can you help me? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Because I need you. <laughs> I ain't got no choice, right? No. <laughs> you, get, oh, you do have a choice. <laughs> you do but have you a do. choice. Yes. But my choice to stay. You do have a choice. Mm -hmm. Good choice. Because, you know, then we weren't going to get very far on the one. <laughs> Okay, I just want to remind you of the definition of those words because it's so important for what we're talking about tonight. So we we all know we're going to that mountaintop. <clears throat> we all know greater signs, wonders, miracles. We know we were activated last week. So again, the definition for never is at no time in the past or the future, on no occasion, not ever. We will be doing signs and wonders and miracles that have never, on no occasion in the past or the future, not ever have been done before. Our faith has to be at such a high level of trust. We walked through that new level of trust. Now we're operating in a high level of trust because we're doing things never seen before. So if we're doing things never seen before, could anybody who see themselves just accomplish this task? Every one of us has been through stuff that a lot of people never get through and still stand on their feet and say, Jesus is my Lord. They get right back up and say, you know what? Jesus is my Lord. There's so much stuff that you've been through and that you've done and that you've done and been through. Look at y'all. And you're all standing here smiling, saying, Jesus is my Lord and I'm the Ecclesia and I'm about to go to that mountaintop to help ignite. If there was scripture in here, and I'm sure there probably is and I, and I don't know where it's at, but it talks about a people that's never been known that's going to step out and they're going to accomplish his works, right? They're going to, each person has a piece. And this is where that comes in when you said that. Look at Esther. Look what she did. She left her family. She went to the palace. She saved the nation. Look at Noah. Look at Abraham. You know, look at, look at Ruth. Look at all these people. Look at Peter and Paul. Look at all these people and what they went through in their walk of faith and every one of them saved the nation so what was it that you said about what if what if that Noah hadn't done what the Lord told him to do what if Esther had not went to the palace and done what she told her? what if Joseph had never did what he wanted to do what if he just gave up where would the nation be where would Israel be what if but they didn't give up. They kept on going because they kept their eyes on him and listening for the Father. Every step of the way. So what if they gave up and quit? What if Esther gave up and quit? What would have happened to the nation? They would have been slaughtered. What if Joseph just lost it when he was thrown in that pit? What if he just said, F it. <coughs> it's not worth it. What if he did, but he didn't? He kept his eyes. She kept her eyes. They all kept their eyes on the Father. And they persevered no matter how hard it was. This is not an easy walk. Not at all. Look at the walk that Abraham took in Genesis chapter 22. Was that an easy walk? Was that an easy path? No. But where was his attention? Now, he was gone for days. And this is a point I want to make. For those of you who think that you have to be nose to nose with scripture every day. That path was, they were gone a couple days. They on that trip. Did he have his Bible with him? Did he have his scripture, his scroll with him? He may have, he may not have. But where was his attention? 
So if you think you have to be perfectly in the word, speaking the word and doing the word 24 seven, then you're misguided. And forgive me for that. Y'all had to get in the word, speak the word, do the word. You have to keep your spirit fed. But if you make it a ritual, like, oh my God, I got to get in there. I got to get in there. I got to get in there. Then you're doing it from the wrong motive and the wrong heart. You must get in the word, speak the word, do the word as he leads you to. And as you want to spend time with him, the more time you spend with him, the stronger your spirit gets. But if you skip a day because you got busy or whatever, or you didn't do it and you suck, is he going to condemn you? So does that make you unworthy because you skipped the day? No. No. So don't make this a ritualistic thing. Your attention is on the Father. If you're not reading it, you're hearing it, you're listening to it, you're watching a decent movie that has scripture in it, something. You're getting God in and your attention is on him and you're praying in the spirit as you go throughout the day. That's where he wants your attention is on him. With everything you do, how can you make this about God? And when you make it about God, then you're like, you know, man, I think there's a scripture about it. Let me go look that up. Then you go look it up. Right? You're getting in work because you're looking it up. But don't feel like you're good enough if you didn't get in the word today. Don't, don't let anybody make you feel less than. Remember? Mm -hmm. Anybody make you feel less than because you skipped a day or two. Get back into it. Say, okay, Father, forgive me. Where would you like me to go today? Mm -hmm. How can I please you today? You may read great. You want me to go sing? You want me to go watch? Yes, the plan is you want me to minister to someone. How can I be of service to you? Now, I'm not giving you the, the okay to not get in the room. You must. But if you skip a day or two, because don't let condemnation fall on you because of it. Does that make sense? Yep. I hope that's helpful. Okay, so back to where I was talking about. So definition of never, at no time in the past or future, on no occasion, not ever. Great is of an extent, amount, or intensity considerably above the normal. So this is great. This is super. That's his super on our natural. Signs. We are going to be doing great signs. Signs are an object, quality, or event whose presence or occurrence indicates the probable presence or occurrence of something else. Meaning, I know you couldn't have done that. That has to be God, because you couldn't have done that. You know, that has to be God. Wonders. A wonder is a feeling of surprise mingled with admiration caused by something beautiful, unexpected, unfamiliar, and inexplainable. That's that part where people are going to go, wow, unexplainable. That's got to be God. That's the kind of stuff we are going to be doing and releasing on that mountaintop. Now, miracles, a surprising and welcome event that is not explainable by natural or scientific law and is therefore considered to be the work of a divine agency. God is the one who does the miracles, not us. So yes, God wants us to see us bigger than just very good job, promise. But we have to stay under Him. It's all about Him. It's for Him. All of it. Now, if we get bigger than ourselves, then we get into pride. And that's I caution and I warn you: do not get into pride because pride will bring you down quicker than anything. Because pride then makes it about yourself. Look how great I am, right? We must keep it about him. And when we do, he enters in and through, and he performs the great signs, wonders, and miracles through us, such the world has never seen. This is sinking in. Okay. And then we are activated, and then we talk about purity. So I was looking today for a word that can describe how huge 
or how big this event is on this mountaintop. And I found this word, I'm going to introduce a new word to you because I never heard it before that I'm aware of. And the word is um, prodigious, 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 there it is, prodigious. That is a word that means enormous, huge, colossal, immense, vast, great, massive. So when you say prodigious, it means it's that big. That kind of fits where we're headed, kind of, doesn't it? Like, what's the word you use? Astronomical. Astronomical. It's just, wow. It's as big as the universe and like bigger. Now you remember, so I was looking today. I thought, where do you a word that's going to be bigger than more? So he, he gave me that word. I found that word. I don't know if he gave it to me, but I found it. And I'm like, yeah, that right there. That right there. <coughs> So we know um, I hear a couple more. <laughs> Not very many. Go ahead. We need to understand what is about to take place. We need to understand the magnitude and the purpose of this assignment. You know, like when you go to school and you get an assignment, you're gonna do it and you wanna do it well and you're gonna turn it in and it's gonna be awesome. If you don't, then things like what Dorothy was talking about. What if Esther, it's too hard of a walk, I'm not doing it. What if Joseph, it's too hard of a walk, I'm not doing it, I'm stuck. They kicked me in the teeth and threw me in the pit and lied to my dad. My dad thinks I'm dead. And, you know, that sucks, that's not. It's awful. But he chose to not stop, give up or quit. He continued on because he had this, he knew he had an assignment. Well, we know we have an assignment and it would be just as catastrophic for God's people if we do not complete this assignment as if Esther and Joseph and Moses and all of them. Why do you think he gave us so many examples? He says, don't stop, give up or quit. Regardless of what the path is, where it takes you and what you go through or been through, God's going to use everything you've been through and all the training and all the all the wisdom and knowledge that you gained through that for what you're about to deal with. So we are the ones that are assigned to ignite the ecclesia. We must be spiritually prepared to walk that path. It'll that path, we will walk up that path like, like we've done before but with an intensity that we've never done before for what is about to take place when we get up there. Make sense? Yeah. So then it says, um, um, I was listening to Pastor Kim Owen and her message, honestly, is identical to what the Holy Ghost had for us tonight. And I said, right there it is, Lord. And he said, look, you are not just hearing. You are teaching the same message, the ecclesia, revivalist message that every one of you are going to carry with you and teach your people around you. So you're not just, you are for this time, like Esther, like the rest of them. And Pastor Kim was saying, I got a call. Whoever gets the gate gets the nation. Where are we going? <laughs> to the gate. To the gate. <laughs> to the gate. Uh -huh. Right? What? What do you reckon today? I'd be out in the field and work towards mountaintop. You recognize there's the gate there. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Well, Dad, whoever gets the gate gets the nation. She also said, whoever gets the gate gets the influence. Uh, the devil was trying to keep you from getting to the gate. Put the devil on notice of the four corners of the earth. We are all going to a location. Isn't that what you were talking about? I'm going there. You're going there. You're going here. We're going there. We soon won't be all together physically because we will be strategically placed. 
but connected. So when we're connected, everything in the middle of where we're connected is going to get influenced by the anointing. This is higher level thinking, okay? So think about whoever gets the gate gets the nation. And scripture talks about Paul. I think it's Peter. I lost it, but it, okay, tell me. Anyway, they didn't just win a city, they won a nation. We are not going to influence just the little church or the little ministry building or the homeless place or wherever. We're going to affect that whole city, that whole state. That's how big this is, which then will be the whole country because it's exactly because there's groups of people like us all over. And then when they get ignited because of our assignment, we're going to be activated and it's going to affect the nation, right? So almost. Let's look at Genesis chapter 22. We just read it last week. <coughs> but there's something here he wants you to see. <clears throat> this is a story about Abraham and the path that he had to walk <coughs> when Jesus or the father asked him to sacrifice his son. We just read it. It wasn't an easy path, but he did it because he knew if he did it God's way, he would get God's results, right? So he stayed focused on the Father. He wasn't real chatty. He wasn't real talkative. He was just very, very quiet. And he was quiet because his whole attention, every millisecond attention was on the Father. And he only did and said what the Holy Ghost told him to do. Doesn't that sound familiar? Right? But when I left group last week after talking about all of this stuff, I said, Father, that's all well and good. We're doing signs, wonders, miracles, seeing Jesus in the natural, all that. But what does it mean to, to have to walk this path? What's it mean to have to go through everything we're going through in the past and right now and this final stretch of training? What's that mean? Why is it important? And he says, he says, Terry, I want you to finish read that scripture. You read it, but you, you went right over it. I want you to see what it says. So Genesis chapter 22. And we'll start with verse 14. And it says, and Abraham called the name of the place the Lord will provide. As it is said in this day, in the mount of the Lord, it shall be provided. Then the angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time out of heaven and said, by myself I have sworn, says the Lord, because you have done this thing, because you chose to not stop, give up, or quit, because you now see yourself as I created you, not how the enemy wanted you to see, because you walked this path and did it for me, because you have done this thing and not withheld your son, your only son, Blessings, I will bless you, and multiplying, I will multiply your descendants as the stars of the heaven and as the sand which is on the seashore, and your descendants shall possess the gate of their enemies. Who gets the gate? We do. In your seed, all the nations of the earth shall be blessed because you have obeyed my voice. Blessings, rewards, heart's desires. Haven't we heard about all of this stuff? Guess where it's coming from? Our obedience to walk this path regardless. We refuse to stop, give up, or quit. It is all about him. Now remember, we're going to that mountaintop and we're going to walk with Jesus and we're getting blessed and we're going to be activated and we're activating the ecclesia. So how he said last week to bring that, how your life is going to change and bring it back to your today to start living that way. Well, if we're bringing those blessings then back to us here, what should we be expecting now? 
blessings. 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 Yeah, because we're going to need those blessings to accomplish this work. Mm -hmm. Get us to that mountaintop. Blessings of faith. Blessings of knowing that he is right here to help you. When he says, lay hands on that person, not anymore. When you're walking with Jesus, you're not going to be like, hmm. he says, lay hands on that person. You know who you are. You are the ecclesia for such a time as this. Okay, I walk with Jesus. I'll go do that. Lay my hands on. Mm -hmm. Right? If he says, go buy their groceries. Okay, I walk with Jesus. He's blessed me. I'm going to, Father, you see my bank account. I don't care. You said do it. That means you're going to supernaturally put money in there. I'm buying their groceries. You're doing a prophetic act. Now, if you do that, how do you know if you have an issue with money, let's say, and you have $25 in your bank account and their grocery bill is $26, how do you know? You're giving all you have, but how do you know that's not a prophetic act that when you do that, it releases transfer of wealth to you? When he says move, because you walked with Jesus and you are that sure that he is. And we're bringing that back to today. When we operate, we operate in him. From this day forward, no matter what. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Again, you're starting to see. You guys get to walk with Jesus physically. Physically. You get to feel him. You get to see him. You get to hug him. You get to talk to him. Your life is going to change. When it changes, that's how you're going to You're going to be like, this demon is nothing. Get out in Jesus' name. Whereas before, you're like, um, I need you to go. You know, you're not, you're not here. You know um, would you just get clean and just stop it? It's just kind of bugging me. No, you're going to be like, no. Because you know who you are. Because you got to walk with Jesus. That's how he needs us to be right now. And I'm going somewhere with this promise. Well, he is. Anyway, and I really appreciate you holding you up. However that works. Okay. So we are operating on a new level of operating. Our focus, our level of attention to the things of the spirit. Now, this is really important. I need you to get this. Our focus or our level of attention to the things of the spirit has to match the level where we're going to be. Let's say it again. Our level of operating, our focus or our attention to the things in the spirit has to match the level where we're going to be. We are going on that mountaintop to walk with Jesus. So we have to have our spiritual life match that so we can function there. Does that make sense? We cannot sit on the couch watching Grey's Anatomy, drinking six beers, saying, eh, Father, I love you. I'll get to you in a minute. When that stuff, such the world has never seen, if that's our responsibility, can you see it? Your spiritual level needs to match where you're going to be. We need no more. Why do you think he says, quit living in the flesh, start living in the spirit and stay there? That's where we have to operate. We're operating in higher level everything. Okay, and don't think that you can't because you're not just hearing anymore. You're an army of God. You're generals. You've been the special secret service. You've been highly skilled, highly trained for this assignment. Can you see me? To see me. She can see. Oh, I have this in my notes. <coughs> him so there's a word boldness that he says 
And I looked it up. And boldness means willing to take risks, act innovatively, confident with courage. <laughs> right? Having a strong, vivid, clear appearance. Just like telling that demon to go in the past. We're standing there going, Hello. are you bold? When you're walking with Jesus, and you did walk with Jesus in your future that you brought back to your day today, you're going to look at that demon and say, out. And it's out. That's how you have to see yourself. That's what I'm talking about, matching your spiritual level. Having that confidence. Not asking it to go, telling it to go out. There's a door. Don't let it hit you because I'm going to slam it. You know, that's how we have to operate. You're fully persuaded. So you move and speak and operate as though you're fully persuaded. Your presentation, your voice, your confidence, boldness moving through you because you know whose you are. You know your assignment. What is our assignment? Somebody tell me. What's our assignment? To do the will of the Father. Ah, yes, but what is that will? What's this group's assignment? To do the signs, signs, wonders, and miracles. Come on, help me. Yeah. Come on, top. Make the switch to make you like with the eye. Okay. You know your assignment. Yes. Who gets to do that? We do. We do. So we need to operate in that understanding of who we are. What I'm trying to do is stretch your feet. I'm trying to show you your words. I'm trying to, you better hold me up. <laughs> <laughs> you better hold me up. I got you back. I'm trying to, and that is so good to know. Thank you. That is what I'm trying to do. Stretch your faith to show you who you truly are. Right? Could just anybody do what Esther did? Could yeah. just anybody do what Noah did? Yeah. Built that ark for a hundred years, getting made fun of and snarked at and ridiculed and spit on and just at it. But he did it anyway. And look what his reward. He inherited the whole earth. We the only one here. Look at family. Look at Esther. She inherited half the kingdom and beyond. Look at Joseph. He was second in command with no question. Come on, that's who you guys are. So walk in that boldness, walk in that confidence of who you are. You operate in the spirit for him and about him to advance his kingdom. There's a reason you are highly trained and highly skilled. Be ready to move in signs, wonders, and miracles. Be ready. For this. Now, Acts chapter 1, verse 8 says, After the power, they were instructed to take territories. Think about this, guys. After we get to that mountaintop and complete our assignment, we know the rewards are there. What are we supposed to do after that? take territories you're going here they're going there i'm going there she's going there you're going there right that's what's next revival baby yeah <laughs> that's what's next once that's ignited so what has to happen between here and there let's ask him transformation you said it last week transformation we're in a transformation process. That's why I see 11s all the time and 22s all the time. Because God is transforming us into that withered little, and I keep seeing it, so I'll see it. You know, from the little mermaid, when Ursula the sea witch takes God's people, the mermaids, then they're vibrant and strong, and they sell their soul for whatever, and they wither down into this piece of wrinkled up seaweed that can't, cough let alone move you know that's what satan wants to see us as 
He stole their life. He stole their vim, their vigor. He stole their dreams. He stole it and made them see themselves in this withered little seaweed thing. But Jesus came to set them free. And when Jesus comes, it's like King Titan, he takes his big old Triton, whatever, takes his big old sword spear thing and goes <clears throat> and knocks out Ursula. And when he does, all those <coughs> chains that were holding all of those mermaids set them free. They went zing into their strong person that they were originally created to be. You guys remember that part of the movie? Yep. yep. Right? Never seen it. Okay, well, <laughs> I'm telling you in case you didn't see it. That's how what God's trying to do. He's transforming us because we saw ourselves in Satan's false twisted image. Jesus came, knocked all of that out, and as we go to him and claim Jesus is Lord, he goes, Meep. And we rise up into our rightful kingdom place. That's what he's trying to get you to see. Because you need to see yourself that way for what you are about to do. Make sense? We're going to be taking territories. We're going to each designated place on this earth. So we'll be covering this earth. And then there's a scripture. Um, I think, Dora, you were reading Psalms 32. Mm -hmm. um, what hmm. Psalms 32, verse 10. Many sorrows shall be to the wicked, but he who trusts in the Lord, mercy shall surround him. Be glad in the Lord and rejoice, you righteous, and shout for joy, all you upright in heart. And then it says, Verse 18, behold, the eye of the Lord is on those who fear him, on those who hope in his mercy. Psalms 34, 1, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Can it continually be in your mouth if you are seeing yourself as that shriveled up little mermaid, squirmy, just hairy? You have to see yourself the way he originally created you for you to be effective and this new level okay that has to be settled once and for all because you guys are already that so you have to kick the enemy in the teeth and tell him shut up in jesus name and get out of my way because i am going up that mountain and i'm going to accomplish the assignment that was given to me just like Esther, just like Joseph, just like, just like, just like, just like, and then I'm going to be blessed beyond <laughs> blessed, and I'm going to ignite the ecclesia, and I'm going to do it for you, Father, because I want your results. I'm doing it because I'm a child of the Most High God, and that's what I'm called to do. See that boldness? See the difference? Okay. And then Psalms 105, I'm not going to read the whole thing, but he's talking about in verse 17, he sent a man before them, Joseph, who was bound as a slave. And they heard his feet with fetters and laid him in irons until the time that his word came to pass. And the word of the Lord tested him. The king sent and released him. The ruler of the people let him go free. The ruler of the people let him go free. He made him lord of his house and ruler of all the possessions to bind his princes at his pleasure and to teach his elders wisdom. He increased his people greatly and made them stronger than their enemies. We're stronger than our enemies? Out. Get it? He also brought them out with silver and gold, and none of them feeble. So they had silver, they had gold, none of them were feeble. And Egypt, Egypt was glad when they departed, for the fear of them had fallen upon them. They were glad they left because they were afraid of them because they knew they knew who they were in Christ. Right? For he remembered his holy promise and Abraham his servant, and he brought out his people with joy his chosen ones with gladness. He gave them the lands of the Gentiles and they inherited the labor of the nation. 
that they might observe his statutes and keep his laws. They took over territories. They came out on the other side, every need met, nothing missing, nothing broken, and they took territories for God's kingdom purpose. This is huge. I want you guys to get this. I don't, he does. He wants you to understand the magnitude of this. Because when we get to that mountain top, things are gonna happen. Now <clears throat> we're gonna I'm gonna stop with this right now because I'm feeling led to. And we're going to get in his presence like we were at the foot of the mountain, at the bottom of the fire lane. He was showing me when we get to the bottom of that fire lane, and I can get around here. This isn't okay. When we get to the bottom of that fire lane, you know how we take position? Mm -hmm. Why do we do this, Neil? Reverence. Honor. Holy reverence. And we bow in his presence. Jesus is our king. Jesus is our Lord. He showed me that when we take this posture, something engages in the spirit. He said, when you kneel, I can hear an army, like there are uniforms and stuff moving. When you, girl, I told you. <laughs> you well, I was to trying to get down. I trying to get down, but I can't. I can't stand there. Okay. Without you, I will fall. You tossed me a second. He says, when you all bow, as a team at the bottom of that fire lane, he showed me and I heard, and it was like a machine. It engaged, it engaged with the spirit realm. And everybody stood at attention. The angels lined that fire lane all the way up. And every one of them, every one of them went as we, engaged and why they took attention because something is about to happen and they know it so our attention is fixed on the father and we say jesus is our lord and our attention is face to face with the father in holy reverent respect because of the task that we are about to perform. You guys have figured out that before you were born, God chose you for this task. And now you're here and we're all together here for that specific time and moment in scripture, in space, in kingdom history. We have to complete the task just like Esther did, just like everybody else did. And it's time. So we've engaged and the whole spirit realm goes, and it's ready. So then when he says ascend on his call, we will walk up that fire. Thank you. And as we walk up that fire lane, as we walk up that fire lane, angels are all lined up. Oh, I see it, Lord. I see it as we walk up there it's a ball of fire that the higher we get up the hill the hotter that fire gets and this ball of fire is what is going to come in contact with the anointing because we're going to take that gate and when we get through that gate and this fire hits that anointing something in the spirit realm will ignite and go across and through the spiritual airways and activate the ecclesia for such the world has never seen. That's your assignment. Who do we think we are? We are the ecclesia. We were the special sauce. We are the ones the prophets are talking about. Don't don't think this is something I made up. It's not. It's this all him. I can't make this stuff up. This is all him. And if it was me, I couldn't stand here without help you know i could just be like ever 
but I can't. It's him. We have a job to do. Our job is to ignite the ecclesia. So our faith all together. And as we walk up that path, that ball of fire is getting hotter and hotter and bigger and bigger. Like, like here we go. And it touches that anointing oil and glory of God will manifest in ways that we don't understand yet, but we will. Is that like totally exciting or what? <laughs> that was so cool. So what do you want us to do? I know the message was kind of sort of short, um, but he wants us to get in his presence as though we were on the mountaintop then. Does that make sense? <laughs> Understand what I mean by that? So we we went there in our future and we brought it back to our today. And now our today, we are going to kneel as though or sit or stand, however he had, but you're you're about to activate, you're about to walk up there. He wants you to totally, totally focus on him and the richness of his glory. Because he said tonight he's gonna take us something tonight as we focus totally on him and his glory. I just went somewhere. I went to the mountaintop and I'm telling you it's rich. It's rich. So that's what we're gonna do. Can you like carve it? <laughs> no, I'm okay. I'm getting wobble into it. So <laughs> <laughs> it's all him. It's so cool. So let's get started with that. Now I want to show you a video, the one that I asked Dorothy to help me find some music that's going to take us there. And the Holy One led us to Holy and Holy. Mm -hmm. And I want you to watch the video first because it takes you through the temple into the Holy of Holies in the video. And then he says, I want you to worship me like that. Once you watch it, let it start softening your spirit. And then we're going to worship that way together. And then we're going to do another song set of total, pure, holy, reverent worship. You don't ask me to hold you up. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Do you guys understand what he wants us to do tonight? Okay. So I don't know how you want to do that on there, but for the message purpose, but then we're going to reverently worship. Okay. 